in this blender tutorial I'm going to show you how you can uh, create an earthquake effect in blender now I'm going to go at this under the assumption that you already know how to use rigid body objects and stuff like that I have this simple scene set up and now what I want to do I want this platform right here let me get out of camera view I want this platform to shake that way it will simulate an earthquake now I could go through and I could keyframe this um, uh, platform but that would be kind of tedious I would have to literally keyframe in every axis every uh, linear movement and I would have to basically keyframe every single vibration or movement which would be complicated and it wouldn't look very natural so I want to use a generator to do it but you don't have to have any special add-on so what I'm going to do with this selected I'm just going to add a keyframe I, I'm hovering over and clicking I and just adding one keyframe you just need one keyframe alright now I'm gonna drag this down so I can create a new window and I'm gonna change this one to graph editor and this graph editor is where the noise that generates the movement or the shake is going to be created now I'm going to open up this for the object translation so that I can actually set a noise on each individual uh, parameter like the X Y and Z location along with the X Y and Z rotation so I'm going to select X first and then I'm going to come over here to modifiers and if this isn't out you can press in to bring this out click on modifiers add modifier and then go down to noise all right this is a basic noise that's being generated now I'm gonna go ahead and press play so you can see what that does it should start any second there you go it's kind of a violent movement to speed this up a little bit I'm gonna um, get rid of this starship because that right there is probably uh, slowing it down a little bit alright see that's the shaking that that particular axis is doing it's kind of violent so we want to slow it down just a little bit I'm going to turn the scale up to about 20 and see all that did by turning the scale up is basically stretch out that noise now if I was to click go back to the beginning and click play again it's basically doing the same thing but see how um, much slower it is it's it's moving a little bit too much so we need to turn down the strength and the strength we will turn it down to point one all right and we'll see it it's still gonna be moving but not very much and that's about right all right now we can go to the Y location add modifier add noise and then we can set this to let's say 15 on the scale so it's stretched out a little bit and then set the strength to 0.075 all right it kind of looks weak but it's basically going to cause it to shake on the y-axis as well as the um, x-axis and of course we're just creating a pretty weak earthquake at this point All right. Now we could do this on the Z axis too, but keep in mind the Z axis is lifting things up and down. So we want to be very uh, limited on that. Otherwise, we'll just be throwing parts around. Stuff will just start bouncing on the floor. 
like let me just leave this set to to the default and we'll turn this on yeah I mean it's kind of fun to look at but I mean it's a little bit ridiculous all right we'll set this to let's say 10 so we have more vertical vibrations but we're gonna set the power pretty low let's say 0.05 all right now we could do the same thing on the rotations now the rotations we have to be kind of careful with because uh, the rotations on this is going to be from the center of origin so the what's on the outer portions is going to have a stronger effect than what's towards the middle but since the middle is the point of origin now I'll go ahead and add noise see that right there is a crazy amount of noise if I was to just choose this things would go nuts but we'll I'll show it anyway See, it went so nuts that the uh, the truck actually went through the floor. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we definitely need to turn down the strength. We're going to turn down the strength to 0 0.01, and we'll see what that looks like. See, now we got a nice little you know when whenever you actually in an earthquake you it's not just swaying you do have that vibration and this right here kind of simulates the vibration pretty good I think but of course you use your own interpretation when setting this stuff up I'm gonna go to the y-axis and do the same thing noise and then of course I want to turn this down to point oh one and then probably stretch this out just a little bit up to five all right we'll see what that looks like I think it works pretty good now let's add a little bit of Z rotation now the Z rotation really wouldn't happen hardly at all if any in real life but I'm going to add just a hair, just a little bit to it. Turn the scale down to about, or up to about 4. And then turn the strength down to 0 .0075. Now let me drag this up a little bit. Look at it through the camera. And you can get a better idea of the kind of shake it's going through right now and see that's to my eye that's similar to how it would how an earthquake would actually be but of course when it comes to stuff like this you use your own interpretation and so forth and of course these numbers that I'm giving you are just baseline numbers um, your scene would undoubtedly require different numbers based on the scale of the scene and so forth but basically that's that's how you go about creating a basic earthquake scene in blender and of course just for more information uh, this cylinder very thin cylinder is a rigid body object but it's set to animate it because it's keyframed because you have to have at least one keyframe in it like if I was to get rid of this keyframe there's not it's not gonna work it's not gonna do anything simply because the noise that's being generated in the graph editor the noise is adding noise to whatever the keyframe is so if you don't have a keyframe then there's nothing to add to I guess that that's probably the best way to put it or best way I know to, to put it of course now my uh, I want, I, my modifiers, my, yeah, I just got rid of all my uh, 
noise generators as well. Let me control Z until they pop back up. All right, now we're back to make sure it's back working again. All right, that's back working. And of course, uh, all these wheels, they are just um, active rigid body objects, convex hull. The uh, trees themselves are active. Now, of course, the trees, they are connected to the, they aren't parented to this platform. They are connected through a rigid body constraint. And the rigid body constraint will allow it to flex and move just a little bit with some dampening and uh, uh, stiffness. That way, see the trees can sway just a little bit. It's kind of a cheap and easy quick way to add a little dynamicness to the scene. And these concrete blocks, they're of course rigid body objects and they're active. And the outside portion of the ground is also a passive rigid body object. So everything has to be rigid body in order for it to work correctly. Because you have gravity pulling on it, then you have uh, the shake being created by this plat platform because of the noise. Um, modifier that's added to each axis and each location so yeah if you have any questions about how to go about doing this because I don't always explain myself very well uh, don't hesitate to ask and I will do my best to clarify but anyway guess that's it later people